Governor Ibrahim Hassan Nkombo, the best way I can describe him is that he's a very humble, insightful man, an intelligent person with a lot of foresight, highly tolerant, very intelligent, and hardworking individual. He is a man that is very rare, a kind of person that is a very rare breed. He is from a well-to-do background. God has endowed him with a lot of intelligence. He is well-read. He has a degree in accounting, master's degree in economics, PhD in accounting, postgraduate diploma in, in computer science. He was the accountant general of Gombe State. He was the accountant general of Nigeria, of the Federation, and the governor of Gombe State for the seventh year. Yet, this man has remained humble, level-headed, tolerant, respectful of everybody. Throughout the period we have been working with him here in the government house, when, as the governor of Gombe State, he never raised his voice on anybody, from the level of the deputy governor to the cleaner. Nobody will ever tell you that the governor has raised his voice on him. If anybody does anything that annoys him, he simply keeps quiet. Only those of us that are very close to him would know that he is crossed, but you will never hear him back. He is an extraordinary person. And I'm being very honest with you, I'm telling you this. In all your years working in civil service, I guess you've worked with governors. And, and how, what is different with this one, Governor Ibrahim Hassan? Well, it is not in my character to be comparing my, the, my superiors, the people I have worked with in that capacity, you know? But I am telling you that Governor Ibrahim Nankombo is exceptional. He is exceptionally humble, exceptionally tol tolerant, exceptionally intelligent, exceptionally enduring, you know, and exceptionally committed to the objectives uh, and principles of state policies as enshrined in the Constitution. He is a man that understands the system very well, he knows the financial system very well, and you see it in practice, in his thinking. He thinks in a very scientific way. You know, he doesn't just model true. You know, and, uh, and uh, uh, that is why he is also a very successful uh, person. Looking ahead, what do you think will be the legacy after that Congress uh, administration? The legacy Dangombo is going to leave behind. Who oh, remember Dangombo for all the qualities I have mentioned to you? Who oh, remember him for his ingenuity in financial management? Who oh, remember him for adding value to the system that has never been done before? We remember him for his respect for the human person. We remember him for his tolerance. We remember him for his good counsel all the times. He is indeed a leader. We remember him for his exceptional leadership qualities. I will always be longing to have somebody like him. Somebody with a very good foresight, somebody that is focused, Somebody that knows what will move the economy of the state forward and somebody that is committed to implementing those ideas that can move the state forward. And he has done it. You have seen it in Gombe State. You can see the transformation. You can see the uh, growth in the purchasing powers of families. You can see that, that there has never been a period when workers have not been paid salaries. You can see that 
because of payment of salaries and other ways of making waste to circulate in the state. The markets are bubbling throughout the state and life, you know, is very easy in Gombe State despite the uh, recession. You could also see that despite the fact that Gombe is in the middle of the northeast, the insurgency has engulfed almost the whole of the North East, but Gombe is peaceful. The level of, uh, uh, of, of bomb bombings that uh, took place in Gombe can be said to be negligible, and there has never been an inch of Gombe state that has been occupied by the insurgents. And this is all attributed to his policies, his uh, creation of employment for the people, his, his, uh, his pronouncements even, what he says, how he handles the people, the extent to which he listens, the extent to which he watches over the people of the state, and the extent to which he manages his relationship with the security agencies and everybody in the state. is responsible for all this peace and uh, economic progress of the state. So remember Nangombo for all this. We pray that the next person that will come after him will consolidate on what he has done and build on the legacies he's leaving behind. This is our prayer for Gombe State. Uh, I won't leave you with answering this last question and I will ask again. <laughs> In the seven years, name one sector that you forever remember Governor Ibrahim Hassan Nampong. It's education. Governor Nampong made education his first second and third priority. He transformed the educational system. He reduced the number of children per class. And for every ordinary person, every ordinary person knows that the number of pupils or students in class per teacher impacts heavily on the, on the implementation and the assimilation of curriculum in the classroom. He built more classes he built more schools in order to reduce that number. He recruited more teachers. He trained and retrained them. He established another university of science and technology. And mind you, all the projects that were executed by the previous administration, Governor Adam Kombo maintained them, made sure that he consolidated on the gains of the previous administration. He did not neglect the university to crash. In fact, he opened the Faculty of Medicine and Pharmaceutical Sciences, you know, and he also established a new University of Science and Technology. He established the College of Legal and Islamic Studies, the College of Education in Illiri, the Gombe State Polytechnic uh, in uh, Bajoga, and he is also establishing uh, more higher institutions, like the College of Agriculture, which is coming up, the College of Journalism, the College of the Institute of Sports, Institutes of Accounting, all these things are coming up. And he also built a complete school of nursing and uh, midwifery in Dukui. It's a complete school, 100%. You know, all the facilities that are required were built in a complete way. Just like the University of Science and Technology in Kumo is a complete university. So the kind of heart, the kind of commitment, the force of character and foresight behind these kinds of projects is found in only very rare individuals. And Governor Ibrahim Hassan Ankumbo is one of those rare individuals. We thank God with the people of Gombe State that he blessed us with a man like this. And let me tell you, there is no society on earth that has ever grown beyond the quality of its education. So anybody that is really committed in developing, you know, uh, his people, the economy, the people, the human being, you know, must invest sustainably in education. And that is exactly what this governor did. And, you know, most politicians would not want to spend their money recruiting thousands of teachers because of the wage bill. A lot of money will go into paying salary and there's nothing 
people would look at it and say this is what he has done only a committed patriotic person can do this and i make bold to say that governor ibrahim hassan nkombo is one of those people maybe somebody will say that uh, this is what is expected of a person of of his own caliber apart from what i have told you about him about his academic qualifications professionally he's a is a fellow of the institutes of chartered accountants of nigeria He's a fellow of the Chartered Institute of Taxation of Nigeria. He's a fellow of the uh, Institute, Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria. He's also a fellow of the Nigeria Economic Society. So, and these are, things are not just ceremonial. There are things that he wrote, examination, passed through stages and, you know, qualified. You know? Therefore, Ibrahim Hassan Nkombo has done well. We are proud. We pray to Allah to reward him abundantly in his future in the